Researcher Michael Saylor hopes the tiny nanoparticles in this vial that light up in the dark may one day make treating cancer easier than putting a Band-Aid on a cut. First, they've got to light up, they've got to glow. The second is they've got to find the tumor. I had to go in for a biopsy, and a week later I found out that it was cancer. I had three girls, my husband and I, and three of us have cancer. Maggie and Lydia, both diagnosed and treated for breast cancer, can talk about the issues and images that come to mind with the words, you have cancer. The mammogram was irregular. My first surgery, they removed like four and a half centimeters. What's going to be next? What do I need to do? That was a little anguishing for me to make that decision to do chemo. Um, I cried a few tears. Uh, you have aching body, you, you feel depressed, you have headaches, muscle pain, and nausea. Everything, and everything 24-7. At the University of California, San Diego, Saylor is working to dramatically change those images and how cancer is treated. He's on a quest to create nanoparticles that travel through the bloodstream, latch on to cancers in their earliest stages, and destroy them. Ideally, you'd like to find the tumor when it's just at one cell level, you know, a single cell of, of a cancerous tumor that's just starting to form. Now, we can't do that now, but one of the really long-term goals of nanotechnology is to be able to do that. What Saylor has done for the past 20 years is figure a way to make nanoparticles that seek and destroy certain cancers in mice. The NSF has been key for my research program. Because 17 years ago, when he received funding from the National Science Foundation, Saylor wasn't thinking cancer. He was trying to figure out how to make nanoparticles. We didn't think about putting them in the body. We just thought, oh, well, we can take these little silicon chips and break them up and make nanoparticles out of them. Why silicon? Because silicon can degrade in the body to harmless byproducts. So we'd really like to have a nanostructure that once it gets into the body and does something, then it goes away. What's evolved is a recipe for making non-toxic nanoparticles. First, take a silicon wafer, the same used to make computer chips, and turn it into a sponge using an electrochemical bath. It punches tiny holes into the wafer, each 10,000 times smaller than the diameter of a human hair. Those holes are small, but they're not so small that you can't load a drug into those pores. Uh, what they are are very small silicon sponges, uh, but they're not that small. They're still pretty big. The next step is to turn the spongy wafers into nanoparticles. So what we have here is an ultrasonic bath, uh, basically a jewelry cleaner. Ultrasonic sound waves break up the silicon sponges into smaller and smaller pieces. These aren't quite nanostructures yet. These are still about micron scale. We keep doing this process for about eight hours. These things will be small enough that we can inject them inside the body. The particles are also chemically coated to emit a fluorescent glow. And we want them to get into the body, swim around inside the body, find the tumor, and then glow, and then allow us to be able to image them. Today, nanoparticles injected in mice are successfully helping researchers find certain cancers. Saylor hopes in five to ten years, these materials will be proven safe and effective for humans. So that's one of the goals of nanotechnology, is that we can build these vessels that can hold uh, a drug that would normally be very toxic to the body. And in fact, it's very toxic to the tumor too. And it holds that drug, keeps it from getting out until it finds the tumor and then it opens up and lets it out. What keeps Sailor going are the letters he receives. And they're dying every day, and I get letters, uh, I'm dying of cancer, or, my wife is dying of cancer, my son is dying of cancer, my nephew is dying of cancer, can you help us? He posts the letters outside his office to remind him, his team, and future scientists the importance of this research. Having the personal interaction with a with a, an old friend who, whose you know, husband died of cancer and now um, actually her mother-in-law has got cancer and now she's afraid that her daughter is going to have the same cancer because you know, it's a genetic con uh, indication there. Um, you know, you do what you can do. Being a cancer survivor, I really do believe that early detection is vital. The less that they have to remove, the, the sooner that they, you get the diagnose, the better quality of life we're going to have. If they could target just the cancer cells, oh, that would be amazing. 
For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt.